on the news tonight. INEC to complete reconfiguration of 180,000 smart card readers on Wednesday. In business, the transmission company of Nigeria installs 300 MVA power transformers in Abia and Kano. And on the foreign scene, U.S. President Donald Trump warns Venezuela's military against the blocking humanitarian aid. Hello then, and thanks for joining us on Super Street's Flagship News, broadcasting to you live from Lagos, Southwest Nigeria. I am Adenike Woye Ajiboye, and all the news in details. The Independent National Electric Commission, INEX, has the process of reconfiguration of smart card readers for the general elections is almost complete. INEX Chairman Mahmoud Yakubu who discussed this to journalists at a briefing on the measures taken so far to ensure the success of the shadow pose in Abuja, said as at Monday night, they have achieved a 95% configuration of the 180,000 smart card readers, promising that the process will be completed on Wednesday morning. Yakobo said INEC takes full responsibility and acknowledges the inconveniences and cost of the shift in dates, adding that the Commission is working hard to ensure that the rescheduled elections hold an history and fair. You will recall that Mahmoud Yakubo had on February 16 in his last address to stakeholders mentioned that they intend to deploy the smart card readers and identify clear timelines for the delivery of the smart card readers. And in a related development, the Independent National Electric Commission, INEC, has debunked the allegation that the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Obubaka, offered the resident electoral commissioner wreck in Adamawa State, Kashim Gaidam, $1 million and a house in Dubai. Condemning the allegation, Ainek in a statement said the wreck in Adamawa completely dissociates himself from the allegation that he had an offer of $1 million and a house in Dubai, insisting that no offer was made to him by anyone. You recall that the Adamawa wreck had in a post on social media alleged that the former vice president had compromised the elections in Adamawa, offering him $1 million and a house in Dubai, but rejected the offer. Former President Olusegun Obasujo has been accused of conniving with some officials of the Independent National Electric Commission, INEC, in an attempt to rig the 2019 presidential election in favor of the People's Democratic Party, EPDP. Some concerned stakeholders under the auspices of National Front of Nigeria, NFN, made these strong allegations on Monday in Abuja. President of NFN, Abubakar Tisav, a former public complaints commissioner of the Federation, said Obasado is at the forefront to compromise the entire process. It is expected that they will not have cause to lament should they, uh, should matters come to that. We want that. The postponement of the election has not discouraged these mischief makers. They will exploit the, uh, the other. Uh, uh, they will exploit the other forward back options. I say, continue to try to hijack power without winning elections, which will cause crisis in the country. The Nigerians and the federal government must therefore not let down their guards as the danger has not passed but, uh, passed, but only retreated to mutate into something more evil than its previous option. Abubakar also said the former president had finalized plans to rig the elections with the support of his cohorts. Atiku Abubakar, the PDP presidential candidate, and River State Governor Yesan Wike. 
The president says South President Mohamedou Buhari's comment on ballot box snatchers is a strong message against the long history of savagery associated with elections in the country. Presidential spokesperson Garba Sheku, who discussed this to journalists in Abuja, said the president has the safety and security of Nigerians uppermost in mind when he made the comment. She who said snatching ballot boxes often entails putting the lives of innocent Nigerians at risk, adding that anyone who dares aid in their desperation to rig elections must be prepared for the possibility of losing their own lives. You recall that President Mahmoudou Buhari had on Monday during the emergency caucus meeting of All Progressives Congress EPC in Abuja warned that anyone who dared to snatch ballot boxes during Saturday's elections will be doing so for the last time. Still talking electoral matters, as the Independent National Electric Commission, INEC, prepares for the rescheduled presidential and national assembly elections across Nigeria, our market schools and other businesses are expected to be shut down again this weekend. As speaking to Superstream News, business owners in Saba, the Delta State Capital, lament economical effects of the postponement on them. I know lectures till then, and so I have to stay extra one week again if I will go back to school. And you know, and you know that after our school strike, they were rushing us. Now we still wait for one week again. When we go back, that one is double rushing. So it's, it's very bad. Postponement of this election, the way it put our business here, we are not happy about it. Since that very Saturday, everything was stranded. Nothing is moving. At least. Before we are getting less, at least before by this time when I'm talking now, we don't make some money. Let's assume in 5,000 or 6,000. But since that's at the up to this time, we are not doing anything. Market is not going. People from far away coming down to Asaba, buying something, they are not coming. Then now, another thing we are hearing now is uh, students. From now to next Tuesday, no school. So we are suffering. We don't know where our government of this time are taking us from. We don't even sure whether the election will, 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 will be get ahead or not. Maybe on Saturday now they will tell us say no election to further notice. This morning the way they come they make, we no come out come make her. If my husband travel go village, since now he never come back for him to go and I don't think say he will go back again for coming a election. Nah, not like that too. But maybe they do have more. Let me say they go cancel it again. Those of us who are in mean, we didn't expect the postponement because it came at the time, it came at the 11th hour. Imagine waking up midnight and receiving calls that the election has been cancelled or postponed to some other time, probably next Saturday again. But now the election has been, I wish about that by that next Saturday, the election will go. They are joking with people and they believe they are all leaders. Well, for now, they have might pay us for wasting our time and disorganize our day. The leaders are not organized. How can they do this? I still ask you that question. So the way it affects you is the same way that it affects me. In fact, they are not organized. They further urged INEC to get it right this Saturday so as not to discourage voters from exercising their franchise. The People's Democratic Party, PDP, has alleged that the Kaduna State Governor Nasser Arafai and Amina Zakari are in charge of the Information and Communication Technology ICT at the Independent and National Electric Commission's office. A PDP's chairman, Uta Sekandos, who will discuss this to journalists during PDP's emergency National Executive Council neck meeting held in Abuja, dismissed claim by APC on the election postponement favoring the party, stressing that the government in power is in total control of the electoral umpire. Sekando said the ICT of INEC is totally controlled by Erifai and Zakari, so 
According to him, he does not see how the will turn around overnight to favor PDP, adding that it might be part of ABC's plans to win the election. You recall that the All Progressive Congress APC had earlier alleged that INEC shared news of the postponement of presidential and national assembly elections with a PDP before taking their action. The immediate past governor of Vicata State, Ayodele Fayoshe, has alleged a fresh vote by federal government ahead of this Saturday's presidential election. Fire shareholders does this to journalists, alleged that the government is planning to use DSS and the EFCC to harass INEC officials not willing to cooperate with their plans during the polls. He said they are considering postponement of Saturday's election to the second week of March, using burning of INEC offices in Anambra, Abia and Plateau State, as well as insecurity in some states as reasons. He also said their plans will be defeated. You recall that Fire Sheikh had on February 15 said the All Progressive Congress APC is planning to postpone Saturday's presidential election. The Adamo State Resident Electric Commissioner REC. Kazim Kaidem has allayed the fears of the people over insecurity, assuring that the forthcoming elections in the state will be peaceful. Kaidem, who made this known to journalists in Yola, said they have been holding a regular meeting with relevant security agencies ahead of the February 23rd and March 9 polls. He said security situation in Adamawa is peaceful, adding the few cases of attempts to cause violence in the northern region of the state have been nipped in the bud by security operatives. The REC solicits the continued support and cooperation of institutions concerned with the Commission to build confidence and promote people's participation in the electoral process. At Inogo State, the governor, Ibikule Amoso, has warned the individuals, groups and political parties to shelve the intention of Reagan during the general elections in the state. Amoso, who gave the warning at the inter-party meeting of leaders and agents in Inogo State, said the election has been won and lost adding that one of the reasons Regan should not be an option is because of the violence that usually comes when people perceive that they have been cheated. He said President Mohamedou Buhari's warning against such intentions should be enough to discourage people with such intent. The governor stressed that their consolation lies in the fact that President Buhari has assured that the election will be the freest in the history if Nigeria. And now the Department of State Services DSS has debunked as rumor the news that its former Director General Lawa Dora still controls the affairs of the agency after his removal from office. DSS in a statement by its a public relations officer Peter Afnaya said the service depends the false belief warning that any person or group that further engages him or his representatives or associates do not or does that at their own risk. Afnaya said the service will not tolerate acts of impersonation designed to undermine it and will decisively deal with persons, no matter how highly placed that may engage in such behavior. He also said that the public should note that and avoid circumstances under which unsuspecting persons may be deceived. The DSS said it will continue to recommit itself to the core values of professionalism, selflessness, vigilance, and the rule of law that it has always been identified with. You're still watching Super Screens Faction News now coming up in business. Transmission Company of Nigeria, T. CN installs 300 MVA power transformers in Abia and Kano. Join us for details of these and more after this time out.
Well, so glad to have you back now in business world. The transmission company of Nigeria, TCN, has installed and inaugurated a 300 MVA power transformer in its Alauji transmission substation in Abia State. TCN's general manager of public affairs, Indidi Umba, who discussed this to journalists, said the new 300 MBA power transformer has increased the station's installed capacity from 450 MBA to 750 MBA, making it the biggest substation in the southern part of Nigeria and made the station consistent with redundancy requirement of N1. Umba said TCN has increased its capacity to supply power to Engu Electricity Distribution Company for onward supply to communities in Abia North, including Ohafia, Arujiku, Etem, Abriba. The GM further stated that some projects under construction will also benefit from the newly energized 300 MVA transformer. The federal government has approved hiring of women to work at night shift at the APM terminals APAPA APT, APMT. APMT Head of Human Resources Anyemeka Ume Uyido, who discussed this to journalists in Lagos State, said securing the permit is an important step in building an inclusive workplace where all talents have the same opportunity to grow and achieve their full potentials. Umeo Oyido said the APM Terminals is committed to advancing diversity and inclusion across the organization and is delighted to have the support of the government in cultivating such culture. You will recall that the Director of Trade Union Services and Industrial Relations Federal Ministry of Labor and Productivity, Omabi Udeme Akpan, had in January 2019 signed the grant of permit order based on sufficient fiscal provisions and APMT's robust maternity policy. To more business news, the Federation Account Allocation Committee, FAC, has disbursed the sum of 270.17 billion naira to the federal government in January 2019. The National Bureau of Statistics, who made this known in fact disbursement statistics posted, said the states received a total of 178.04 billion naira, while local governments received 133.83 billion naira. According to reports, the sum of 649.1 billion naira was dispersed to the three tiers of government in January 2019 from the reigning January 10, December 2018. The National Bureau of Statistics said the amount this best comprised 547.46 billion naira from the statutory account of 100.76 billion naira from valued other tax and 976.53 million naira on exchange gain differences. And that's it in business news now still ahead on the foreign scene. U.S. President Donald Trump warns Venezuela's military against a blocking humanitarian aid. Details of this and more after this timeout. <laughs> 